The St. Lucia Social Development Fund presents Sons and Daughters of St. Lucia, The Land, The People. Today's program highlights Mary Grace Augustine's growth and her contribution to St. Lucia. Scotsman J.T. Ray paints his picture of some buildings in St. Lucia in 1898. In his words, these were merely one-roomed hovels about 16 feet by 8 feet. The framework is made of wood cut from the nearest plantation, roughly squared and fastened together with pins. The walls are constructed of horizontal strips of bamboo, between which the blades of coconut leaves are interspersed. This is the St. Lucia that Mary Grace Augustine was born into on June 2, 1897. By the time she was 17, the world had been plunged into chaos with the start of World War I and St. Lucia had to play its part in the war effort. On Monday, November 11, 1918, word of armistice had reached Castries. By April 29, 1919, 18 sick and wounded soldiers arrived in Castries on board the Grand Tilly Castle and on May 28, 108 St. Lucian veterans had returned home to an enthusiastic welcome and, among other things, two pounds and the promise of a piece of land. By October of 1918, Mary Grace had gained her general nursing certificate and also a certificate in midwifery. Seemingly unaffected by the war and wanting to accomplish as much as she could, Mary Grace became articled to her barrister brother, Elwyn Augustine. She studied with him for four years, intent on becoming a lawyer. Her intentions would not be realized. When she went to write for the bar exams, she was informed by the acting Chief Justice J.E.M. Salmon that the legal profession in St. Lucia made no allowances for the inclusion of women. No legal precedent had been set previously. Mary Grace did not protest. Instead, she moved wholeheartedly into agriculture. She was the first person to grow coconuts on a large scale. She was very enterprising and experimented on crop varieties that were not indigenous to the tropics. She capitalized on marketing and shipping arrangements for bananas and became a large-scale banana planter. Her pioneering work in those days resulted in the formation of a number of agricultural associations and Mary Grace became the founding member and one of the first directors of the St. Lucia Banana Growers Association and the St. Lucia Agriculturist Association. She was the first and only female director of the St. Lucia Coconut Growers Association and the St. Lucia Copper Manufacturers Association. She sat as one of the first members of the St. Lucia Development Board. This board was the result of a United Kingdom government commission set up to look into the economic development of St. Lucia. She served on a number of boards including the Labour Advisory Board and the Board of Education. She revolutionized transport and would travel to and from Castries by motorcycle. She created employment and stimulated economic growth in Miku in a number of ways. She opened a grocery shop and invested in early tourism through a hotel development in Miku. She opened and managed a clinic and organized doctor's visits on a bi-weekly basis. Mary Grace's dreams were endless. She wanted to be a jockey. She wanted to become a cricketer, but instead she became the first woman to join the St. Lucia Cricket Club. That is all she was allowed to do at the time. Join us next time for another in the series of Sons and Daughters of St. Lucia, a program designed to highlight various aspects of the lives of people who assisted in the development of our island, St. Lucia.